Hello and welcome back to the channel. So we've got something a bit different here. I'm going to talk you through this Creality Halot uh, Mage Pro 8K resin printer. So what I'm pointing out here at the minute is this is called a VAT. Now this VAT screws out as I'm showing you here. And you might see in the background there's a spout that's just lifted up. You just need to be careful of that when you're doing that. So as soon as you get your 3D printer you want to be taking off this vat, and um, once you've unboxed it, obviously, and then you want to just check that your LCD screen is ready to go. Obviously, it won't need any of this. I've been printing relentlessly <laughs> for about two weeks at this point, so this is more of a maintenance cycle as well. But just showing you, um, I did film quite a frantic video of me on my phone as uh, showing what it was like getting it out of the box and doing a print straight away. And I didn't think it, it showed its franticness. So I thought, well, after I've actually done it for a fair bit, I thought I'd show you some good housekeeping and how you get this printer set up ready for a print. And then in later videos through this series, I'll talk about the pros and cons, how you can improve stuff, what you can do going forward and go on like that. So at the minute, I'm cleaning the LCD screen, which is very much like your phone screen facing upwards here i'm cleaning it with a microfiber cloth you want to make sure it is a clean surface sometimes a little bit of resin can get on there which we see a little bit later you just want to be very careful with scraping that off using the plastic scraper so you don't damage anything and uh, and, and then you're ready to go so the first thing you need to do when you get your 3d printer and also whenever you change uh, whenever you move it so if you move this into a different room, you need to do it again. You need to level the build plate. The build plate is this silver thing up here that I'm attacking with an Allen key. That comes off of a movable uh, joint, let's say, that goes up and down this screw. Uh, the, the, can't quite see. See that silver thing in the middle at the back? Um, that is a screw thread. And this arm that I'm um, unscrewing this build plate from moves up and down on that screw thread and that is how you create your print. So what we need to do is loosen these four Allen key screws that you can see me attacking there and that allows the plate to move above where it's fixed at the minute. There's oval holes which allows this to move between the screws and you'll see this shortly once I've loosened it out I move it up and down. It's loose there now you can see it's dropped so it has this movement and you can then uh, secure it at any of those points where it moves up and down. So you get this piece of paper and you put that on and what the piece of paper is doing is giving you the thickness of the sheet in the bottom of that vat that we took off. There's a there's a sheet at the bottom there that we'll talk about later. It's called an FEP sheet or a FEP sheet. That just holds the resin but allows UV light to show through. So now we can see the screw in the background spinning rather fast and the arm is going down and you'll see that when this then reaches where it think it knows zero is, the build plate, it went below the point of the build plate. So what you do is you pinch this sheet of paper in between the LCD screen and the build plate and then you tighten up. And ideal practice is to be able to tighten these two four screws on each side and then when you're trying to pull the corners of the piece of paper, it shouldn't move very easily. It should be a very stiff sort of tug to actually move it. That means your build plate is level and all your prints will come out correctly. I was getting no end of problem. Uh, and even I, I did this on camera and had to redo it because I just couldn't get it tight enough. Or you, 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 can, you can do it again and again and again. You'll know when it's right. Um, it's all about you've got to press down firmly with one hand tighten up the screws with another if you if you don't get it quite right it loosens again take your time get it right your prints will come out okay if you don't get this right you'll get uh, I was getting fading so if you think across the build plate where your prints would come out I was getting thickness of the resin so the bottom layers was fading to one edge and that's simply because the build plate wasn't level I was also getting failures I was getting things lifting off the build plate which we'll see um, in, a later, in later videos as well, because I've, I've filmed some of that. All of that was a direct result of not having this build plate level. On this particular printer as well, you can put that build plate back on wrongly. 
you can pull it the wrong way round. So that's another thing we'll talk about in the second video as to my corrections on how to do that. That's more after three weeks of using it, the things I've learned. That's what the next video that's going to follow this one sharply, maybe even in the same day. If not, it'll only be a day or two afterwards. And um, that's more sort of uh, on the job kind of filmed. <laughs> you know, I'm talking whilst filming. So you can see here, still trying to tighten this up. Um, just trying to emphasise the point here of when it's when it's right, it's right. And once you're happy that your build plate is now level, we can go ahead and put the VAT back in. So on this particular printer, we've got a feed that comes in. And again, just giving it a quick wipe because there's been a lot of messing about with that piece of paper. The, the feed spout, we just need to be careful with uh, when we f feed the um, actual VAT in underneath that. So here we go with the VAT, we're offering it up. Uh, you can see I'm going in, an, in, a, in at an angle to go underneath the spout that's sprung and it's pulled the spout back in again. Um, now, there's my uh, Gurt Swede getting in the way. Um, I'm just trying to line it up that I've got the screws in the right place. And it's not as simple as it looks. I mean, it is. You've just got to get it. You, you'll know when it's right. You'll get it lined up. You can see that spout again. It's all, all very careful. Don't, don't go forcing anything. Just be gentle. And when it's in, lock it down tight and it's solid. It's a very uh, good fit. It's either right or it's completely wrong. So there's no in between. Uh, now, just checking that it's level as well with my nice little pink, uh, pink spirit level on a steel ruler and um, we're level from both sides. We've also got an extractor tube here, which isn't, usually, isn't actually that long. I've got a connector, but just, just so you know, if you get this printer, that screws into the back and that plugs straight into the carbon filter. So now we're looking at the print mode. Now, a lot of this isn't explained massively well. You can see here there's six uh, settings that we can change, and that's on the normal print mode. If we change it to Dynax, and then go up to Dynax Plus. No idea what any of this means. When we go into print parameters again, we get another uh, another four or five options there. And this is all to do, uh, sorry, three options. And this is to do with the cushion layer height. And what that is, simply, is you've got base layers, which uh, stick the resin print to the build plate. Then you've got cushion layers, which are layers in between. They, you don't always have to do those. Usually it goes from the base layers, then you start printing the objects you wanted to print. This is a way that you get cushion layers, which just gives you a little bit more um, help for getting the resin object stuck to the build plate. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? I'm not sure I do. Now, here we're looking at printing a file. So I've plugged the USB stick in, and on the USB stick is some files, as you can see, nine warriors, nine geckos, tank brusher test. All of this is to come. Tank brusher is a YouTuber and a um, 3D CAD designer who puts his STL files up on his Patreon. And he does German, uh, well, tracks, I suppose, but he's also expanding. So he's got a lot of options for German uh, tank modelers well worth checking out. So what I'm pointing out here is loading a file. I've seen a number of people saying we don't know where the file is. Whenever you load a file onto the machine, and that's what you're doing, it's on the USB stick, it downloads it from the USB stick onto the machine so you don't get any issues. You can then pull the USB stick out, it's fine. It always goes to the top left. So that's what's happening. Every time the file you've just selected to pull in is on the machine, it'll go to the top left. Now this is in real time, it shows you now that this file being verified, please wait. The larger the file, the longer this takes. And on these files here, these are just figures, these mummies and archers. Um, they're like Warhammer figures, for want of a better word. Uh, I've done a lot of extra processing in the actual file. Again, something we'll look at later on in this series. And that has put a lot of extra uh, size into this file. 
So there you can see it's now loaded, top left. Now you've got two options. You've got file parameters or printer parameters. These are parameters that you can fix. So you can either do it on the file in your program when you load it in, or you can have them set to the printer, as in the hardware, what we're looking at here. So that's just a, a way of having it changed about. So this is the printing parameters here. You can change the exposure time. When you do that, whenever you change something, it says, are you sure you want to change this? Gives you a reminder. And then when you're ready to go, you can print from that, uh, that place. So once you've got your file loaded, you've got the VAT in place, you've got your extractor fan ready to go. You need to pick your resins. Creality sent me this resin, this fast UV curable resin. I've switched to Anycubic Water Washable Resin Plus. That was what I was advised to get, Water Washable Resin Plus. Um, this is just simply because I was struggling with cleaning off my prints. I'm in a flat. I haven't got outside space to move stuff out. I need to wait until I'm going to work and, and uh, dispose of liquids that way. So for me, using water washable stuff, you can see I've got the face mask on there as well. It uh, just is simpler. And all it means is the, the resin washes with water, whereas the fast cure stuff washes with IPA alcohol. There is a feed tube here, which you can use if you like, and that is on the back there. You can see me feeding the tube into the top of the bottle. You leave the bottle open in the back, you feed the tube in, you go around to the front of the printer, and then there's options to feed that in. Uh, you can see there just in the left, there's three white buttons with the spout just below it. And as we go on a bit closer, you can see you've got in, out, and shake it. No, you've got stop. So I'm pressing in, slight delay as it pulls it in. This will now fill the vat up to um, me either stopping it or till it runs out of resin in the bottle. So you need to keep an idea. You've got a couple of markers there at the back. You've got a line for 500 mil and then above it, a line for 1,000 mil. Uh, I tend to fill the vat up to five, the 500 mil line, regardless of how much I'm printing, um, simply because I've done one print where I ran out of resin and that's that's the biggest waste you can do. I had plenty of resin left in the bottle, but I just didn't fill up. I didn't notice it, so I didn't fill it back up. You can obviously just pour it in out of the bottle as well. This is just a feature, which is a nice gimmick. You can have this going on. Whilst you go out the room to sort something else out, you come back in a minute later and it's filling up nicely while you're getting your print ready, etc., etc. So once you're ready, we've got the file loaded. All you've got to do is press start. Once the resin is in, you've pressed start the build plate will start to lower. And once we've got it zoomed in with a bit of in and out, you can see the screw there is moving. The build plate is coming down. It will drop into the resin. It will find what it, it'll find what it calls zero. It will stop there and it will start the process of printing. You've got a timer on the screen, which has a countdown, tells you how long it takes. You can also link it to a phone app as well, the Creality phone app, where it will give you a counter of how long's left, and you just got to leave it. Now, what I'm doing there is making sure that screw is tightened up, because I've got a terrible habit of putting this back on and not tightening up that screw. So we're just going to have a quick chat about calibration. So this is something I didn't actually do, and then I was um, advised to go back and start here especially as I change the resin. So as I, I say later in the video, when we look at resins, Creality sent me some resin, which was their fast resin, and I wanted to switch to water washable resin because I was having a few issues using the chemicals in my setup. It just didn't work for me. So I wanted to switch to something where I could just use water and it was a lot easier. Uh, so whenever you switch a resin, start a resin, begin 3D printing, you need to do something that is called calibrating your printer. Really what that boils down to is calibrating the settings of the printer to work with the resin you're using. So every time you change resin, you're going to need to calibrate the printer. There are a couple ways to do it. You have There's a number of calibration files that you can download. This is one of the most, in, uh, uh, most widely used and shown ones, and this is called a matrix. This is the resin XP2 validation file and you can just google that and it will come up. Now the trouble with this is, and I, I had a few of these, I find this a little bit difficult to interpret. The basic principle is you're meant to check the holes here against 
the um, circles that are printed. So you can see there's a row of circles there printed and there's a row of holes there that correspond to them. Now these go to extremely fine um, up in this section and they're meant to relate to a recessed hole. So the first things you look at is this centre section, these two points are meant to absolutely touch, there isn't meant to be any blurring, you can have uh, the points receded back or you can have them over, so you're cutting off, so say they're touching like at that point. So you would see that that obviously doesn't work quite well. Um, you can also have like uh, some of these fading out and the holes getting bigger. These, this is a mistake I made, these are not meant to be all the way through. You're not meant to be seeing through. That's another example as well of this is showing you here I, I did it at 1.2 exposure of script in a 1-2 also these lines here are meant to relate to the slots here I think as you can see by my explanation that this is quite uh, it's open to interpretation and it's somewhat difficult to see straight off the bat what you need to adjust. Uh, can you look at this and see whether it's overexposed or underexposed? I'm struggling to. The next option is to go for something like this and after all the ones I looked at this was what I thought was the best. This is called the cones of calibration. I've printed this three times here and one of these is a major success. So what you've got is a success side which is this and a failure side. On the success side all these points are meant to touch. These two do, this one doesn't. On the failure side, they're meant to be no cones in the top. So they're all meant to fail on the top. So there you can see that relates to the different points. So obviously this is the best for failing. So we swap it over and they're not touching. I may get this wrong and I'll, I'll fix it in the edit, but my understanding is these not touching is underexposure and these on the failure side touching is overexposure. So if you have the exposure too high, these will touch. If you have it too low on the success side, they won't touch, but you'll still get the fail. So what I've got here is an example of three. So I've gone too exposed, too far the other way. So then I dialed it back. I came to 0 0.9 seconds and that got me all of them connecting there and all of them lost here. I think this is 0 0.8, 1.2, 0 0.9. That, easy to interpret. Everything else you can see is all, it's tabletop foundry, that's who gives the file. Everything else is printed. You've got the base layers, the cushion layers, everything sorted. So that's just a quick overview of calibrating your printer and these are the ones that I recommend for you to dial in your exposure rate. So there we can see uh, what my what the timer is with the print. Um, we just had a bit of an interjection there from myself uh, telling you about calibration, but this is carrying on from the print that we were showing just before. Obviously, you should do some calibration before, but you know everyone's going to want to just print something straight away. Now, what this tells you is you've got 33.63 millilitres being used, and we've got two hours and 20 minutes uh, before it's done. And now we can see the printer doing its stuff. And this is what happens. This is putting in the base layers. So you can you can change all the settings. Uh, your base layers, you can select how many it is. You can go from one up to, well, I'm not sure how much. But generally, a good rule is between six and eight. And that is initial layers that are put down onto the build plate for your resin object to be printed on top of. And that means it secures it onto the build plate. Many of the options you're going to be getting initially is stuff not sticking to the build plate. It sticks to the FEP sheet in the bottom of the vat and it gets pulled off of the build plate. As you can see, it's gravity, so it's pulling and pulling. We're a little bit on here, probably about an hour, and I can already see at this point... Oh, sorry, we're finishing. This is printing a different file. I see what I've done. Sorry. I... <laughs> I'm catching up with myself here. So this is a print done. When the print's done, the build plate raises up. It's a good idea to leave it there for a little bit to let it uh, just drip naturally. And what I've got here is an actually a failed print, which I did, couldn't work out at the time because I'd leveled the build plate and everything was well. And I'd already just printed something and it came out perfectly and I'd been failing before because I hadn't leveled the build plate. 
I put the build plate back on this arm here where I'd undo the screw and I put it the wrong way round because it's easy to do. There's two screws on the top and that's the only way I realised it was sided because they're not even. So there's two at the front and not one at the back. I've put this on, the two at the front being at the back, which is meant all the levelling I've done, you can see how it's sort of flapping off the build plate a little bit and it's, it's not stuck. You can see just at the front there, it's lifting off. That is a pure sign of a failed print. And if, if you get anything lifting away from the build plate, it's not, going to, uh, it's not going to print correctly. And as soon as you see that, you may as well stop just to save yourself some time. But we're going to plough on with this regardless because it's good to show you a failed print because there's other problems that come with it. You're going to need a tray of some sort. I've got this funny little uh, like service tray and a bit of tissue. Now, I hold the build plate here and we get the scraper that comes with the printer and we just scrape it off. You can see sort of bash into the side. Uh, it looks a bit sort of rough and agricultural, but it works and I haven't broken anything yet. So this seems to be the way most people do it. As you can see, when you get under, you just slip it off and it's all about catching that resin. So now I've put the build plate back on the arm and I haven't screwed it down. And that's the thing I need to keep remembering. Um, I've just placed it there so I know where it is. And then we start to get the resin washed. So what I was doing was putting it in the washer, which uh, Creality have sent uh, to me as well. Uh, and then the water was clouding up very quickly. So what I found is best to do is to have a small bowl just of water, and this is to rinse it in. So you've got a print just come out of this liquid bed of, uh, you know, vat of resin. It's got lots of resin in it. So I shake it around in this bowl. This is not to wash it. This is simply just to wash off the excess resin. From this bowl, you can then dry it off a little bit, or you can go, that's what I would suggest is better, actually, is to let it dry off a little bit, then go from here into your wash and cure machine to be washed properly. And what the washing does is washes, washes off all the resin that's liquid and um, clears the parts, makes them nice and clean and ready so that when you cure it, you don't have this extra layer of resin because this resin is cured through UV light. So obviously if there's liquid resin over your parts, that will get cured on top of it and you will lose detail, you will lose definition. It's like a heavy paint layer on a fine model. So this is the wash station. I've got this black uh, finer mesh uh, sort of grate in there. It comes with quite a wide uh, mesh, which I find a lot of detail parts fall through. So I'm just dropping it now. This is straight into water, dropping the parts into that tray and, uh, and getting myself ready to, you want to make sure it's all submerged. I do put a, a little bit of uh, washing up liquid in, usually just a drop. And you can see we've got two minutes here. So I've set the time to five, sorry. And then um, we've got two lights on the left here. So I set them... Uh, to from wash sorry <laughs> I set them to wash this is all correct so I've got it on wash quick five minutes press play go confusing myself here the second video will explain a lot of the reasons why I'm getting muddled up here and you can see now that it's doing its thing with magnets it just spins this like propeller blade at the bottom it creates a vortex swirls the water around the machine now we've had a failed print so what we need to do is go back to the printer and there's some issues we're going to have here. So we use the plastic scraper, nothing else, because we'll damage the vat, the FEP sheet in the bottom of the vat. You can see I'm getting caught on stuff. That's because the resin is cured to the FEP sheet, not onto the build plate. So we need to get that out. Now, there is a simple way to do this, which is brilliant. It's in the settings. It's called cleaning. You click the button. I know this is very dark. I'm, I apologize. It gets better, I, I assure you. Um, we click OK, it's now curing for 10 seconds. What that is doing is putting a UV light across the LED screen to uh, set a film of resin. And you can see it already starting to lift back there a little bit. And what the fabulous thing about this is, it captures all the debris, lifts it off the build plate, sticks it in. There you can see it's all stuck into this, this sheet. And you can just pull the sheet out and chuck it away. It's the, it's the simplest way to do it. If you do it any other way, you're going to get all kinds of problems. You can see some of the base layers there, sort of like a, like a hatching. That's all stuck into this piece of sheet that I've just set. So you let the excess resin run off, 
I always seem to think there's value to this resin, but I'm sure it's only pence worth that we've got on there. You can see all those sections there that should have sat on the build plate and given us a successful print, but they didn't. Straight in the bin, forget all about it, don't worry about it. Then you need to think about why there's been a problem. And when you get resin gloves, resin on your gloves like that, don't mess about, just chuck them away. All it's very disposable, I've got to be honest. A lot that you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of rubbish from this. But it's best just to throw these gloves away and put a new one on because you're gonna get resin all over the place. It's not good for your skin. It does it can hurt you, so you want to be careful. Especially if you get resin on your skin, you don't know, then it sets in the sun, you'll get blisters because it sets it heats. So just wear all your safety precautions, your gloves, goggles if you if you feel like you need them, face masks. To stop the fumes although this water washable resin isn't too bad so now we're going to get rid of the resin and we're using the out function on the um the feed that we've got there and i'm just i was always struggling with this simple things you see it wasn't sucking all the resin up and then i saw someone was just pushing <laughs> pushing the resin towards the spout with this plastic spatula which makes so much more sense as you can see below there i'm already loading the next print getting it on because I want to know, uh, I want to know what's going on. I want to get a print going so I can understand what the issue was. And as I said, for me, it was having a build plate that was screwed on incorrectly and not leveled. And I've since stuck a post-it note on the front of the printer to tell me to check the build plate is put on correctly, the right way around with screws out, and that I've screwed down the fixing bolt as well to make sure it's anchored on to the raising arm. So you can see we're just pushing a bit more resin, just waiting a little bit of time. You have to check, obviously, that the bottle is <laughs> where this is feeding to is going in the bottle, but I've had no issue with any of that. Now you can see now it's sucked out most of it. So this is the bit where I was always struggling. You just push it, push the resin to the spout. You can get all the way there. It's part of the cleanup and it's no problem. And then we just get in with a little bit of um, kitchen roll to get any excess out. And then when we've used the... Uh, gravity feed or the feed that we're using here the pump um, I then lift the tube up and clip it up so that then gravity lets any resin in the tube run down and then I do click the in function just to clear that tube and then I use a bit of uh, tissue to clear back so as you can see there we are we're getting pretty clean now and you can see there that that is what is called an FFEP sheet which is what I'm scraping this resin off of I'm not digging into it, being very careful to be very light over it, because you can damage the FEP sheet. If you do that, you're into a whole world of pain, because that FEP sheet is the only thing protecting your printer from the resin. And that resin goes everywhere, I can, I can assure you of that. So uh, you want to make sure, you know, keep good sort of husbandry with this, this tool, look after it, and, um, you know, don't be heavy-handed. See here again, I'm being quite light with the tissue, just trying to get into the edges. You don't need to clean it perfectly. You can keep the resin in there. If the light gets to it, uh, you're going to have problems because it will set the resin. But as long as you keep it in the dark, people do this in cupboards, <laughs> keep it locked away in a cupboard or have it in a, in a room that doesn't have any windows. I just put the box back over it. Uh, I have a blind down when I'm printing. And then when I'm done, I put the box back over the top and that's it. It blocks any light out to it. Here you can see this is... I put that piece of tissue there and then run the excess out of the tube. Meanwhile, our uh, wash is finished. So now we go in and I pull out that tray. We take all the parts out and we just let them dry on a piece of tissue. And it's just letting all the water kind of just naturally drain off back into the, uh, the tub. Everything you see here is what came with the printer. So that plastic tub was all part of it. It, it fits perfectly. It's custom built. It's got the uh, propeller in the bottom. It's got a clippable lid on top as well so you can shut it all down if you want to and um, it works really well I mean uh, as far as fumes and anything like that's concerned uh, it's pretty minimal I mean you can see some Mr Leveling thinner there in the background I mean it's no different to any of that you just need to extract it and having the carbon filter as part of the printer and, and having that extract out of the window uh, that makes for a very easy easy life really you can see now I'm just letting the, the rest of the water run out of that because it is mixed with resin so you do it's not just water again you don't want to be putting your hands straight in the water because it's got resin mixed with it 
This is the cage that comes with it, with the printer. So for larger prints, it's absolutely perfect. That's brilliant. And then you can pull that cage up and it's a lot easier. It drains a lot quicker as well because the holes are small, uh, bigger. Now, this is the lid I'm putting on. So I like to clip that down again just to keep the fumes down, although it is minimal. Much worse if you're using IPA or even methylated spirits. You can imagine what that smells like. So uh, that causes a few more issues. Um, and then I put the uh, tub as well that I rinse stuff in on top. I always like to uh, dry off the base as well. There always seems to get water under there. I'm sure it's not coming out of the actual tub, but there we are. And, and this is me just shutting it down. This is showing you the whole process. Um, and I find it very easy. It's very user-friendly. It's uh, it fits perfectly there on the on the table, um, and it's a, it's a whole new world. It really is. The possibilities are endless, and we haven't even started to scrape the surface of what we can do with this in this video. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a new series, so I'm going to be um, putting these videos up as and when I uh, I get through some stuff. I have been printing a lot of models, um, so I've got a, I've got a good idea of what's what, and I've had tons of help from people who know far more about it than I do. So I've, I've had a very quick learning curve. Um, so we'll be talking about this as we go forward on the channel. This is me just putting the box on and the reason for that keeps the fumes down, stops the light getting to any of the bits that have got resin on it. So that's why. Uh, now, I hope that was of interest. It was a bit of a sort of, you know, crash bang wallop kind of, uh, kind of video, but um, I think it, it serves a purpose, it shows you the whole process. Now in the next videos that will come down, we'll get a little bit more technical and we'll talk a little bit more about the specifics to these printers. So thanks for watching, thanks to Creality for sending this over. There's a link down below for you to walk, buy one of these if you like to uh, get involved. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, I'll keep a link for e these printers in each video as we go on through. There's plenty of ways to um, find out. The printer is the Creality Halot Mage Pro 8K printer, and um, it's, a, it's a great printer to get going. I haven't ever used any other printer, and this was brilliant straight out of the box. So what more can you want? So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.